Hello everybody, my name is Andreas Fahrt. In the next 20 minutes, I will tell you about interoperability in machinery industry and what is the global production language. I will tell you who's the VDMA and why OPC UA is for the mechanical and engineering industry so important. The VDMA is the most important industrial association in Europe, maybe the world. We have more than 3,300 member companies and we are representing the broad manufacturing industry. And this is done by the structure of the VDMA. The VDMA is structured in 38 trade associations and that means, for example, we can represent from additive manufacturing over integrated sample solutions, over machine tools and manufacturing, mining, pumps and system, robotics, until woodworking machinery. So under one umbrella called VDMA, we have a lot of different fields inside the mechanical engineering industry. In addition, the VDMA was founded in Germany, but it acts globally. So we have offices, for example, in Brazil, China, India, Japan, Russia, Austria and Brussels. And for that, and this is the most important thing you have to keep in mind, we have the possibility to harmonize between the different branches and their companion specification work. But let's start with the idea of the smart production of the future. We all know that, for example, digital market platforms or integration of machines, products and systems, um, or for example, the traceability of data are the most important things for the smart production of the future. What do all of those use cases have in common? It's information and data and exchange of information and data. And this is where we are talking about OPC UA and OPC UA companion specifications. Because OPC UA fits the requirements of the mechanical and engineering industry. And this requirement in detail is, of course, the need of standardized interfaces. But standardized interfaces is not the only thing. It has to be on an open platform. In this technology, there has to be security by design. It has to support different protocols. It has to enable a semantical machine description, exactly OPC UA companion specifications and interface standards are relevant here. And it has to be globally accepted. All those requirements are fit by OPC UA technology and the companion specifications. And this is why we as the VDMA are putting so much effort in developing those OPC UA companion specifications. So what are the real benefits of standardized data exchange and standardized interfaces? Of course, there are two sides, the machine manufacturers and also the plant operators, the users. And um, for the machine manufacturers, it's pretty easy. Um, the in-house development is less time consuming. You have less coordination effort between your um, partners, your suppliers and everybody who is in your value chain because you know exactly how to exchange information and those information are standardized, descriptive and so everybody understands what you are meaning by the information and data you are exchanging. And for the plant operators and the integrators Of course, it is also pretty good because now you can simply combine different machines, components, systems with each others because you again know what is meant by the different information and the interfaces are um, described in the same way and you don't have to understand the machine, the component from different manufacturers again and again, because everybody is doing his own interface. The funny thing is 
that we all know that manufacturer independent interoperability is totally known in the customer life. Just think about what you're doing when you want to print something. You connect your laptop independent from the version of your Windows system or if you have iOS or Linux or Android, you just don't care because you just connect, for example, via Bluetooth to the printer. And again, it's independent from the printer's manufacturers. If it's a Samsung, a Panasonic, a Epson, whatever printer you have, it works. And it works because there was a group in the Bluetooth community who discussed about which information has to be exchanged in which way so you are able to directly print your paper. And this is exactly where we want to go with OPCUA for the mechanical engineering industry. And to put it in a nutshell, I will show you a short video about the VDMA and what we are doing with OPCUA companion specifications. Together with mechanical engineering companies, the VDMA is developing OPC UA companion specifications. Why? Open Platform Communication Unified Architecture, or OPC UA for short, allows engineers a platform independent, interoperable, and vendor independent integration of different machines in production. The VDMA represents more than 3,200 member companies and is the voice of the mechanical engineering industry in Germany and Europe. The VDMA supports manufacturers in developing OPC UA companion specifications. This ensures smooth Industry 4.0 communication. Industry 4.0 communication is ensured both between machines and from machines to other systems. This leads to more efficient production. For engineers, this results in the Industry 4.0 application fields of plug and work, condition monitoring, predictive maintenance, and OEE improvement. OPC UA companion specifications define the form in which the machines provide certain information. This makes integrating the machines into an existing production environment and configuring machines much easier, of course, and it makes the engineers' work much more efficient. That's how Industry 4.0 works. So now, as we all know, that OPC UA companion specifications enable that you can machines integrate easier in existing systems and plants, there is often the question if your product, your machine, your component now is easily to replace. And the answer is definitely no. Because we as a VDMA are doing OPC UA companion specifications, but you as the machine builder or the customer, you have vendor specific extensions. That means everything which is not in common for all of the machines of a specific type is not inside the standard. So let's take this little girl and see the remote control. And what are you doing or what have you done years ago when your remote control doesn't work correctly? You went in a shop and you bought a universal remote control. And on that universal remote control, you had just those possibilities all of the TV vendors have in common. So switch programs, zero to nine, text, switch on and off, something like that. But the specialized um, functionalities, for example, the red button on the remote control is starting a time shift or whatever. This is something which will never be on the universal remote control. And this is exactly what you are implementing on the vendor specific extensions. So with this Easy example, now you know why OPC UA companion specifications do not make your machine easily to replace, but easily to integrate. And um, this all is based on the OPC UA technology. And this OPC UA technology is developed by the OPC Foundation and its members. And the OPC Foundation for that is really important for us. And this is why we are 
working closely with the OPC Foundation. So to make it clear, the OPC Foundation is specifying OPC UA. OPC UA uses companion specification and companion specification has to be specified by domain experts. And those domain experts are in the network of the VDMA. So the VDMA is just hosting those joint working groups we have together with the OPC Foundation. And in addition, often there are also global partners we are accepting and also inviting in our work. So if you are thinking about doing a standard, doing a companion specification in the field of mechanical engineering industry, get in touch with the VDMA and let's start this together or maybe there is also something running already and you can join there. But now let's have a look on the two days activities hosted by the VDMA. And as you can see here, there are a lot of groups in different branches are developing OPCA companion specifications. It starts with additive manufacturing. We have air pollution control, automated guided vehicles, compressors, compressed air and vacuum technology, cranes, food processing and packaging machinery, foundry machinery, glass machinery, integrated assembly solutions. Um, integrated assembly solutions is everything, for example, you can put on the end of a robot arm like a screwer or a gripper. Um, we have intralogistic systems, lasers and laser systems for material processing. We have the length measuring technology. We have the field of mining. We have power transmission engineering, printing paper technology, pumps and systems, surface technology, textile machinery, woodworking machinery. And those groups I mentioned are already a joint working group or actively in the phase of developing the OPCA companion specification, goals, scopes, and also the standards. In addition, of course, we have groups who have already released their specifications. And this is the machine tools and manufacturing systems, the machine vision, plastic and rubber machinery, and the weighing technology group. So to summarize that, we have a rapid increase of new OPCA working groups. There are more than 23 VDMA sector branches under discussion. And we have more than 25 branches who are right now actively developing OPC UA companion specification. And those are also internationally supported by different companies from all over the world. So this means we have more than 35 working groups. And there we are including over 600 companies. And those companies are not just from the mechanical engineering industry. We also have the process automation industry. We have the electrical techniques. We have um, IT and we have automotive industry, for example, as a customer. So what we are trying to do is to involve all the different stakeholders who are using later on the specifications whether during the implementation on components, machine and systems, or later on as a customer site in their factories. Those OPCA companion specifications do not fall from heaven. The groups are working from one and a half to two years on the companion specifications. And it all starts with a preliminary work. In this preliminary work, we are trying to involve all stakeholders for the specific companion specification inside the working group. So it's not only the manufacturers of the machines, it's also, for example, MES suppliers, um, controller manufacturers, or even users. And the next step when we have those groups is the content work. And doing the content work, we have those domain experts in a room or in calls or meetings. And we try to figure out which functions, which properties, which information of the interface should be covered in the OPC UA companion specification. So in this phase, it is not about OPC UA, it's just about designing the content of the OPC UA companion specification. And the domain experts are figuring out the scope and the goal of their specification. And in this phase, we also start the internationalization. So we are 
definitely developing international standards. For example, in the group from the machine vision, we had over 60 companies from all over the world. And there were, for example, also vision associations from US, from Europe, from Japan and from China involved directly from the scratch. During this phase, we have also the joint working groups with the OPC Foundation. So this is really the point where we are trying to get even more companies inside of the working group to have for sure the critical mass of companies necessary to have worldwide accepted standards inside the joint working group. The next step is design an OPC UA. So what are we doing during this phase? We are taking all the content out of the content work phase and design that in OPC UA information models. So the properties, the functions, the information the group has decided to put inside of the companion specification now is modeled in an OPC UA information model. After that, we have a release candidate and later on a release. And this release and also the release candidate is published as a VDMA standard and also an OPC Foundation standard. They have the same content. The VDMA standard we choose because there we have a process which is given by the VDMA and it's totally compliant and everything. And of course the OPC Foundation standard makes the standards more accepted and known all over the world. And to make even more people aware of the OPC UA companion specification standards, we have demonstrators. So in the last step, we have the use in the industry. The demonstrators, for example, for robotics or industrial vision or machine tools show that the companion specifications are not just paperwork, but that they are really able to implement and that they are able to use in the shop floor. Last but not least, what we are trying to achieve is consistency. So we have to harmonize different specifications so that they are not standardizing in common information in different ways. And the harmonization is exactly done in the OPC UA for machinery. So if I talk about a specification for plastic and rubber machinery, I am talking about domain-specific harmonized information models. But if we want to have specifications which are harmonized between, for example, robotics, weighing technology, plastic and rubber machinery or machine tools, we have to do cross-domain harmonized information models. And this exactly is the OPC UA for machinery specification. So with the OPC UA for machinery specification, we have a working group which is discussing in common information properties and functions for the whole machinery industry. And I personally believe that this exactly is the key to success for interoperability in the mechanical engineering industry in the shop floors worldwide and is also the basis for industry 4.0 use cases and IIoT of course. If you are now interested in the activities of OPCUA inside the VDMA, please visit our homepage opcua.vdma.org. There you have the possibility to get the latest news, to see which working groups are active. You can also find the contacts for each of the working groups. And maybe the most important thing, you have the download area where you can download free of charge the released specifications and also the release candidates. So stay in touch, get in contact if you are thinking about doing any OPC UA companion specifications in the field of mechanical engineering industry and let's start the groups together or please join our groups. If you got any questions about OPC UA companion specifications and the activities of the VDMA, please feel free to contact me or my team. Thank you very much for listening.